Let's build the forum app from scratch in just five minutes. Here's the plan. We'll use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build a minimalist app just like this one. We'll build the page structure and style, load and add content with JavaScript, and save the content that we add. Then you can continue building anything you want on top of this. And we'll also do it in five minutes, starting now. First, let's create the structure of our page with HTML. I'm developing with VS Code and the extension Live Server. Looking at our reference app, we can see each thread has a number, which is a great use case for the ordered list HTML element. Each row has a lot of information, but let's just focus on the thread title, the timestamp, and the number of comments for now. I'll wrap our row in a link, so clicking on it takes us to a thread page. For now, let's put in two rows with fake data just to make sure everything's showing up. When I save, Live Server will refresh and things look terrible without CSS. Now let's add a separate page for a thread, which we can see here. It has a comment box and a bunch of comments. So I'll create that HTML file, thread.html, and I'll start with that orange header bar at the top. Let's just copy over a lot of code from index.html and change the content and class names. We'll create a few elements for the header section up top and the content. Then we'll use a text area and a button for the add comment section. And finally, we'll do a very similar row type layout for the actual comments themselves. So I'm just giving every element its unique class name so we can style it later. And here's how it looks, still pretty basic. So let's add some CSS. Let's bring over that my forum header and create a style tag. We'll give the whole body a small margin and then mostly just remove the default styles. It's pretty ugly having those links blue and underlined. I'm also removing the default margin on the H4 and adding display flex to line things up horizontally. The paragraph element also had a default margin, so I'm just setting that manually myself. Finally, I'm just changing the top bar to blue just to customize it a bit. I'm adding a container div with class main and trying to match the background color to the source. And now I'm just trying to line everything up, change the font color and size and constrain the width. So with that, we can start styling our other page and I'm actually just gonna copy and paste this style tag into the forum.html. I'll make another container div with class main and try to get the alignment just right. I'll make the comment box bigger and move the button. Let's move things around so a comment actually looks like a comment and change the text to gray where we need to. The timestamp moved to the other side, so I'll make a new class for that. We'll add one more comment just to get that spacing right too. Looks pretty good, so time for JavaScript. I'm creating a file data.js, and I'm gonna store every thread in JSON or an array of objects. So we're making two of those threads and then adding subarrays for comments. Now let's import these into index.html with a script tag. And I'll just console log it to make sure it worked. So I'm opening the console and we can see the two threads are there. Now there's different ways you can create HTML with JavaScript, but what I'll do is loop through each thread and then I'll paste in the HTML we had for a row. I pasted it between back ticks, so it's a string that we can replace the values of. Inside the loop, we can pull out individual properties like date and title from each thread, specifically title, date, and comment count. So we've created the HTML for a row in string format, and what we have to do now is paste it into the container. So I'm selecting the OL component, and then I'm gonna use the insert adjacent HTML method, which will actually convert that string into HTML inside the container. When I save that, we can see it worked perfectly. So let's delete the sample threads we had directly in our HTML. Cool, all right, let's finally add in the linking so we can actually visit a thread when we click on a row. The real app uses a query string parameter that is a variable in the URL. So I'm gonna add an ID parameter to each thread object and we'll use that as a query string to navigate to thread.html. We'll extract that ID from the URL with the window location search browser object and slice off that question mark. Then we can search through our threads for the specific ID that we want to pull it out of the thread array. So let's render our header section by doing the same thing we did in index.html where we just pasted in a template string and then replaced all the variables dynamically. Finally, using the insert adjacent HTML method. Cool, now let's render that comment subarray one by one by looping through the comments property and then doing the exact same thing. Template string, replace the variables, and then append it into the right container, which this time has the class comments. And with that, we are rendering all our data correctly, so let's move on to actually adding comments. There's different ways you can do this, but I'll select the button and add an event listener on click to it. And once I have that, I will select the value of what I've typed in the text area, then I'll add that string that gets typed into our page. Now we already wrote the code to add a comment, so let's just put it in a function that we can reuse here too. So when I test that, we can see it definitely appends that comment to the bottom, and let's just clear out that text box too to reset it. Problem is now, whenever I refresh my page or navigate, I'm gonna lose my comments that I added. 
Usually you'd wanna use the database, but since it's a front end app, let's use local storage, which is a browser database. By the way, it's not secure at all, so be careful. And this is another browser object that you can access just with the local storage variable. Let's add code to data.js that checks local storage to see if key threads is available. If we already set it, let's pull it out, but if not, let's set it as the value of default threads. Local storage can only hold strings, so we're gonna to have to convert our object back and forth. We use JSON parse to convert to an object and JSON stringify to convert to a string that we can actually push into storage. Now we only have to add a bit of code to our event listener, so whenever we create a comment, we are also updating that key object. And time, five minutes is up, but we've got a really good starter app here. Here's a few ideas for what you can add next. The obvious one is to create some code to add threads, not just comments. And we've already done this in thread.html, so just add some code very much like it to index.html. Remember to update the local storage object every time you add a thread. From there, you can add upvotes, you can start adding comment replies that are nested like this, and you can even connect this to a real database and deploy it on the internet for the final step. Anyway, that's how you build a forum app in five minutes. Like if you liked it, and let me know if there's anything else you want me to build in five minutes.